the social label that I am disabled had a really strong impact on my mindset. My first mass test, I did really bad. And I went home and my mum asked me why I did bad. She said, Liam, why have you not done as well as Chris and Caleb and Mitchell? And uh, I was very upset at the time for being compared to my friends. And I'm crying and I say, mum, you doofus, how could I ever be good at mathematics? I have no legs. And uh, obviously it's because I hadn't studied, I was actually very capable. And, uh, but that identified to my mum that the way that I was thinking about myself, both physically and intellectually, was being shaped by how society viewed me. And she encouraged me very early on to take a lot of knocks and to face my adversity head on. At 14, I start getting into trouble. I've got a terrible binge drinking culture in New Zealand, I start drinking start smoking weed inevitably that comes around with that culture. I promised my mum that I, I'd stay away from it. Inevitably, I, I kept smoking weed and kept drinking uh, due to social pressures of being at that age and also being vulnerable to, to trying to be cool when you're the guy with no legs, trying to be cool at school. You gotta do more stupid stuff. Um, at 18, uh, my uncle died and uh, he died from stomach cancer and then my auntie died and then, <clears throat> Two months after that, I was uh, on a trip to Wellington with my friends for St. Patrick's Day and I'm in the car and I get a phone call from my dad informing me that my mum has also died. And for the next four days, I did not tell any of my friends while we were in Wellington that she'd passed away. I kept it within myself because I didn't want to ruin anyone else's weekend. I just scraped through high school, then I shot off to Australia, ended up working with a bunch of crack addicts, thought that this probably isn't the best place to uh, get over your mother's death. I come back, I go to university, carry on drinking four nights a week, this is not going well. I get this girlfriend, she breaks up with me, she gets an acting scholarship to London. Two weeks later, I drink drive. I reverse out of a friend's driveway, I ride off uh, his girlfriend's car. I drive two meters down the road and crash my truck. Next day, I wake up and I decide to turn everything around. I go back to my university dorm room, I grab an A3 bit of paper, I write success in the middle, and I start brainstorming. I think about doing things like stand-up comedy, but the irony of a guy with no legs doing stand-up is more ridiculous than playing football. I think about climbing Mount Cook, but I didn't want to lose any more limbs to try and turn my life around at that stage. Uh, and inevitably, I chose running. And I reach out to this guy named Phil Vine, and we pitch to the New Zealand public to, for the funding to get these running blades. And uh, a month later, I'd, uh, I'd actually turned my life around. I get the running blades and I start training. And uh, it, it was hilarious because I had a friend who goes, Liam, you've got the running blades now. You're actually going to have to do this. In three years' time, you're actually going to have to go from being someone who drinks four nights a week, smokes weed, to being a professional athlete. And I said, you're right. This is going to be hard. Anyway, for the next three years, twice a day, trained my ass off for the first nine months while I was training and learning to use these blades. It was like running in, uh, running in shoes that are a size too small but made of carbon fiber and you have no flesh around your feet. That's what it was like running for me. Dealt with bone bruising, bleeding, um, and a whole bunch of other issues. But, three years down the road. Olympic Games record here. What a confident man this is. From Auckland, Liam Malone. Malone fighting back. Watch him become a star. Just look at the power, the determination. He wasn't going to be beaten. Nobody was going to overtake Liam alone on this great track in the engine hour. Woodall with the silver. That's good enough for gold. Ahead of Woodall by six hundredths of a second. You've already watched him become a champion. And then bear on the outside. 70 to go. Woodhall now Malone digs in. Looks for the double. Moves up, takes Woodhall. Ferris powering home. Malone in front. Ferris a danger. Malone. Ferris dives at him. Malone had enough to hold on on the line. He's shown some absolute pure guts in this championship. It's going to be a lot of fun watching Liam Malone in the years to come. Malone winning the most important battle of them all. Two goals. Silver, he's been a great campaigner, entertainer. Thank you, thank you. Well, I tell you what, it was, uh, it was unlikely that I would ever make it to Rio. The guys that I was going up against had been competing for eight years. The records were set by Oscar Pistorius, and it took him eight years to set those records. And it took me three to break them. But that would not have been possible without the New Zealand public being batshit crazy enough to put the money forwards and give me that opportunity. Something that I'm incredibly grateful for.
and uh, the hard work certainly paid off. At that time, uh, I also increased my study workload to 125% of what a normal student would take, and uh, my life was really consumed by just those two goals. But it's crazy what you can achieve in a short amount of time if, if you become obsessed and really work towards it. That is a really condensed version of my story. Uh, due to time constraints. There are a number of strategies and different things that I've accomplished um, or learnt within that time. And I wish I could share them with you, but I am, I am confined by time constraints. If you would like me to come to your workplace or your conference, please get in touch with the Celebrity Speaker guys. Flick me an email or a message on LinkedIn. Add me. Uh, thank you very much. And I hope that the rest of your day goes really, really well. Thank you, guys.